Hi guys, howdy and hello. Welcome back to my channel. What can I get y'all started with today? Water? Might I suggest the onion bloomer with a side of drama? What are our beverage options? Well, we've got Earl Grey, we've got chamomile, we've got green, but don't forget all of our tea is piping hot. The last time we came out of hiding for spooky season, we went over The Host by Stephanie Meyer, my favorite book. Today, we are going to put on our hiking boots and stroll right into the Blythe Wood for a little hike. Blythe Wood is the first in the Blythe Wood trilogy. Pew pew, your girl read them all. Okay, she did. Blythe Wood is the first book, followed by Ravencliff, then Hawthorne. This book takes place in the 1900s, and except for a few minor details, it doesn't feel dated at all, which to me is an accomplishment in and of itself. Is that the phrase? In and of itself? This is your education system at work, people. We start off going to work at the shirtwaist factory with our main girl, Ava. She works there with her best friend, Tilly, so that she can help pay the bills for the apartment that she shares with her hat maker mother. On her 16th birthday, while her and her mother are out for a walk after a hat delivery, her mother stops cold in her tracks, and when Ava looks across the street, she sees a man in an Inverness cape and a Homburg hat. Shortly after that, Ava's mother starts consuming laudanum and dies of consumption soon after. While at work at the factory, a beautiful boy appears and warns Ava that she needs to get out of the factory. However, she ignores this, thinking him to be a trickster of a delivery boy. So when the man in the Inverness cape shows up, Ava's more than taken aback. Because she senses danger, her best friend Tilly stops the man from approaching Ava by getting his cape caught in her sewing machine. The boy who issued the warning of the man in the Inverness cape and Homburg hat distracts him so that Ava can make an escape. While Ava's trying to make an escape, a fire breaks out in the building. While trying to save herself and her friends, the beautiful boy appears again and helps her to the roof where she can make an exit via a ladder to another building. After insisting that Ava is the first one to cross the bridge to safety, the man in the Inverness cape shows up and pushes Tilly out of the window. The boy helping Ava across the bridge also gets attacked and they both fall. However, he magically is able to catch her and put her safely on the ground where she passes out. When she awakens, she finds herself in a mental facility being drugged and held against her will. After some months, she's discovered by her grandmother's assistant who takes her in where she can be delivered to her grandmother as her new ward. However, soon after arriving, her grandmother informs her that she will be attending the Blythewood School. Ava's nervous, but looking forward to discovering secrets like who the man in the Inverness cape is and the identity of her father, as well as why she keeps hearing bells in her head. However, some things are better left unsaid. Let's talk characters. Tilly Cooperman, Ava's best friend until her untimely demise at the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. She was friendly and full of life and would take those who need an assistance under her wing. Say, did you guys know that this was an actual historical event? I didn't, and it wasn't covered in history class either. These two greedy clowns straight up murdered a whole building full of innocent people. 146 people died in this fire, and these fools were found not guilty. These girls were trampled, died of smoke inhalation, burned to death, and some of them, rather than be filleted alive, jumped out of the windows to kill themselves on the concrete instead. This whole thing lasted a total of 18 minutes. The fire trucks weren't equipped for the new tall buildings in New York. Where the fire was on the eighth building, the ladder could only reach to the seventh floor. They tried to put out a net to catch girls, but three jumped at the same time and broke the net. So, how were they at fault, you may ask? The only fire hose that was in the whole building was rotten and rusted. There were only two exits, one of which led down a narrow stairwell that not many people could get down at once. The other was a street entry that was locked from the inside. These two men also refused to input safety regulations like sprinklers. Sons of b Judicus Van Drude, also known as the Shadow Master, also known as the man in the Inverness cape in Homburg hat. He used to be a teacher at Blythewood School, but after he was scorned by Ava's mother when she was a student, Look how she lights up the sky My Ben Evangeline 
allowed this darkness to grow inside of him, leaving him susceptible to be overtaken by shadows. Tenebrae were easily able to get into his soul because of the growing darkness there. That's what they feed off of. He is now out for revenge, not only against the daughter of the girl who was like not interested to begin with. PSA, that's not cute. You get rejected, move on. Don't go out and start a shadow army. That's petty. But not only revenge against Ava, but the entire world as well. Mrs. Throckmorton Van Riss Hall and Agnes Morgan. Ava's maternal grandmother, she's never been able to locate her due to her estranged relationship with her daughter. However, when she finds out that Evangeline has passed away, she's able to start searching for her in a specific area. She's only located after Ava is announced as one of the victims of the Triangle Fires. She takes Ava in and at first appears to be harsh and taciturn. I prefer to be unsociable and taciturn. But as it turns out, she's just like a fancy piece of chocolate. Hard outer shell, soft mousse cream interior. Best kind of chocolate. As for Agnes, well, she went to Blythewood School with Evangeline, Ava's mother. And in a way, she's sort of taken over that mother-like role. For Ava. This is very clearly shown by the fact that after the survivors of the Titanic are brought to shore, that is correct, that Titanic, Agnes is the first one that Ava embraces, even though her grandmother reached her first. Daisy. Or, as she's very eager to correct you, Miss Daisy Muffet of Kansas City, Kansas. Every time. She at first seems like a mousy little thing, but she quickly comes out of her shell. She's the heart of the group, which I think is adorable because she gave her heart away to Mr. Appleby, a banker of sorts back in her hometown. Thoughts of him keep her going, keep her courage strong. Helen. Bambi. Helen is vain and a gossip. She clearly has a crush on Nathan, the headmistress's son, but other than that, she proves to be a loyal, loyal friend. She has got your back as proven as she goes into the woods right after Ava ran into them when nobody's allowed in the woods, especially alone. Even though her family does start to disintegrate towards the end of the book, she still remains loyal and true to her friends. And I always think that you guys know how I feel about loyal friends, so I appreciate Helen, even if she does talk too much. Raven. Miss Goodman had some avian jokes on deck when she wrote this book. Raven, also known as the beautiful boy from the factory, happens to be a darkling or a fallen angel, whichever you would prefer. His kind are able to ferry the mortals to their afterworld and fairies to back to fairy after they pass. He tries to keep an eye out for Eva, but she does not make it easy at all. However, one thing is very, very clear. The boy is love drunk, be it boys like girls version. I used to be love drunk. Or Beyonce version. Okay, I'm done. Okay, now I'm done. Evelyn Hall is a chime chime. Born on New Year's Eve at the stroke of midnight, she has earth magic that allows her to tap into the seven mythical bells said to ward off evil and mortal danger. Also, they can ward away and summon the creatures of fairy. There are two in particular though, the base bell, which signals danger, that she can also use to slow down and calm people or herself, and the treble, which signals when you're falling in love or already in love. Guess who it plays for? She starts off as sort of a weakling, but by the book's end, she's a hero among champions. Advice. One, don't talk to strangers. They could be husks of humans infected by the tenebrae looking to steal your soul. If you have one to steal, that is. Two, you want a trick or a treat, okay? There are certain times that you should just take the tree. All Hallows Eve is one of them. Solstices, equinoxes, the realm between this world and fairy are very, very thin. Those veils allow you to be more easily accessed. So lock your doors and stay at home unless you want to keep God. Do you want to be taken by a changeling? Alrighty then. Three. I was going to say that sometimes the truth is better left unsaid, but that I, I don't agree with that, okay? Does Ava find out that her mother had a little fling with the Darkling? Yes. But was it better than not knowing? Or was it worse than thinking that Judicus being Druid was your dad? No. Trick, 
You get to have wings. It's going to be so cool. Or let's follow Helen Van Beek's example in the loyalty department, not in the big mouth department. No, we don't need that. Today, I will leave you with this. Sticks and stones may break your bones and leave you lying in the mud, but you get scared when we are alone. I might just suck your blood. I could tell you a witch's spell, but it might just blow your top. And you start to run just as I'm having fun. It's awfully hard to stop. Honestly, that was more like a threat. That's what it sounded like, right? <laughs> right. But I mean, the Pierces, they're just so talented. Can you tell me what other song they have that's very popular? It might have something to do with lying and being pretty. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I, it's not necessarily that this book scares me, but you know how you get really into a book and then there are just certain aspects that really get you? The Tenebre did that for me. Something's infecting my soul because I'm a bitter Betty. Like now I gotta stop being a bitter Betty. I gotta stop being petty patty, but like those are so fun. <laughs> but um, I'm not trying to have myself taken over by shadow crows because I don't like crows to be in my um, if anything's gonna take over this body, it's gonna be an owl or a wolf. So, that being said, definitely check it out. It is a good series, I remember that much. If you like this video, please be sure to like this video. I will see you lovely little creatures in the next one.